everybody, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new project and part of the Not A Card series for Simon Says Stamp. I am so excited about today's project. Do you like parties? I do. And I think these projects that I'm gonna be sharing with you today, which are five different birthday party decor ideas, I think you're going to love them. And the best part is that these projects are simple. These are not gonna take you tons and tons of time to make them. You'll be able to make these in a very relatively short amount of time. So if you need to make a whole bunch of these for a birthday party, you will be able to do that. And I'm trying to use very few supplies so that way you don't have to have a ton of items on hand to be able to make these. Chances are you probably have stuff in your craft room that you probably could swap out and use in place of the things that I'm using today. If you are interested in any of the products that I am using today, I do have them linked in the video description below or over on the blog. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I do have a link to the blog in the video description below. All right, so let's get into party mode. I'm going to start first by making some cupcake boxes. We all love cupcakes. Why not put them in something cute? So I have this unicorns and rainbows pattern paper pack with loads of adorable patterns and fun things. We're gonna be using a lot of this in our project today. I'm gonna to be focusing first on this border sheet. I'm gonna cut all of these little borders into small strips, which I've already done off camera. So I have a whole stack of these nice little borders that I can stick around the outside of a cardstock cupcake box. And the box is super great for holding your cupcakes. It's nice and small. It fits a standard size cupcake beautifully and it's really simple and easy to make. I actually made this with a circle die. So the circle die that I'm using today is from Simon Says Stamps Nested Circle Die Set. This is the four and a half inch circle. I'm going to die cut that from a variety of different colors of cardstocks, which you can see here. And we're going to score this to be able to fold it into a box shape. To hold our box together, I'm also going to use the Simon Says Stamp Dot Runner. It's a really great strong adhesive and it's going to hold my boxes together beautifully. We're gonna score at three and three quarters and one and a quarter on each side of our circle. After you've scored once, you're gonna turn the circle 90 degrees and do the other side. So we have crisscrossing score lines. You're gonna have a nice square in the middle. Then we're gonna score at two and a half inside of each of the little notch triangles that are created after we've done our main score lines. These lines are going to help form the corners and be able to have nice squared edges for our box. Then we'll fold all four sides together to create that nice square box. We'll take a little bit of our adhesive and put that in the corner areas only and then fold those back together. Folding ahead of time before adding the adhesive makes for nice crisp lines for your box and it's gonna help the box hold its shape better. With one of the patterned paper strips that we've already cut, we're gonna wrap this around all sides of our box. Again, where this is allowing us to be able to pre-fold everything so that way we get a really nice crisp edge. Then I'll add adhesive to the back side of that paper strip before bringing it back over to our box and starting with the shortest end, we're going to start folding this all the way around our box. So that way when we end up back around to where we started, the last piece is going to be a full size length that's going to hide where we started because that first piece is shorter. This is a 12 inch long piece of paper. So this wraps around our little box here beautifully. So that way we have a nice continuous look around the whole box. These boxes are adorable and take literally no time at all to assemble, especially if you do this or any of the projects that I'm doing today in assembly line style, this is really going to go fast. So once you've decided how much of everything you need, you can pre-cut, pre-score, pre-fold, and then adhere everything together to make these adorable little cupcake boxes for your cupcakes. All right, next we're gonna make some toppers to go on top of those cupcakes. You can't have cupcakes without cute little toppers to add some extra embellishment. So I have a bunch of 12 inch pieces of patterned paper here that I'm going to fold together to make these adorable little rosettes. These rosettes can be as wide as you want. I chose to do a three and a quarter for my width and we're going to adhere everything together with hot glue because these rosettes have a tendency to want to pop open. Hot glue is a great adhesive because it instantly bonds. 
I also have one and a half inch circles that I'm gonna stick on top of my rosettes, but you could change the size depending on how big you'd like your rosettes to be or how big of a circle you'd like to have on your rosette. I like a little bit more of a fuller rosette, so I am going to do two sheets for each of mine. So I'm gonna have two strips of paper for every single rosette. After we've added our score lines, we're going to fold these in an accordion style, which will help form our rosette. And I'm gonna do that to both strips of paper. Once we have our strips folded together, we're going to start adhering them. I need to add adhesive to one side of the paper strip and then glue it to the next paper strip to form a continuous line. So now we have two strips of paper adhered together and then I'll adhere the other ends of the paper strips together so that we form a ring. After we've formed the ring, we'll bring the rosette together and stick it inside of something such as a lid to a jar. That's gonna help the rosette hold its shape and I like to put something heavy on top so it doesn't pop out of the lid. Now that my hot glue gun has a chance to heat up, I'm going to add some glue to the back side of my paper circles and then lay those on top of one side of the rosette. That's going to help form the rosette and allow it to bond to the circle to form the shape. I'm gonna give that a chance to dry so that way it has a chance to bond to the paper. Then I'll flip it over and repeat. I'm going to add another circle to the other side and that's going to form our full rosette and it's going to hold the entire piece together. Again, I wanna make sure that has a chance to set. So typically what I like to do is start the next rosette while the other one has a chance to dry. After my rosette has completely dried, I'll pull it out of the lid and we can glue a toothpick onto it. So that way we can stick this on top of our cupcakes. I like the toothpicks that have a flat end on the top and they're a little bit longer than a normal small toothpick. So I'll slip this inside of the rosette, the little spaces that are created from folding the paper strips together. And that's going to complete the rosette itself. You can embellish this however you'd like. I actually ended up choosing to take a little heart from Simon Says Stamps nested heart die set and cut it from gold glitter paper. Once I've cut a whole bunch for my rosettes, I'll glue a heart onto each side because these rosettes are double-sided with that fun pattern paper, I wanna be able to have the opportunity to use either the pink or the rainbow side depending on which cupcake I'm putting it into. These rosettes are truly adorable and are the perfect little topper for any cupcake. Speaking of sweet treats like cupcakes, ice cream is another great theme for birthday party decor pieces or favors. How about we make some ice cream favor boxes? Now these may look complicated, but trust me, they're so easy. It's aided by the fact that we're gonna be using a matchbox builder die from Mama Elephant. Check how cute these are. So this is a matchbox and I added a little popsicle stick, a pretend popsicle stick. This is I actually made from paper because I didn't have any popsicle sticks on hand. If you have popsicle sticks, you could totally replace it with an actual one. But I made this from some cardstock and then we added some fudge on top using a paper rose ice cream blob die and we added a bunch of fun sprinkles. So these are the products we're gonna be using. I have a rounded corner rectangle from Simon Says Stamp, the ice cream blob, the matchbox builder from Mama Elephant, and I chose some different colors of cardstock that look like ice cream. I'm going to start first by cutting the body of the ice cream, which is made with the matchbox builder. I need two pieces of cardstock to cut the outer part of the matchbox and then the box that actually goes inside of the matchbox sleeve. I also cut the ice cream blob from some brown cardstock to create the fudge effect. And we're going to fold all these pieces together to form the shape. So for the matchbox builder, I'm folding on all of the score lines that are created once you've gone ahead and die cut this from your cardstock. Then I added adhesive to all the sides and I'm going to fold them all together to form the box. So to assemble the box, all you need to do is stick the small little flap tabs that are on the side here onto one of the longer sides of the box. Then you fold the tab that's created from the die over the little small tabs and that's going to hold the box together. Then once you have those little tabs adhered, the last finishing touch is to fold the small flaps on either end of the box over and then that's going to complete everything. Then this box can get slipped inside of the matchbox sleeve. 
Once you add a bit of adhesive onto the little small flap that hangs off of the side of the sleeve, that's going to form the sleeve and the box will then fit inside. So like I said, I used the ice cream blob die to create that fudge effect. And after trimming this to fit the one side of the box, I'll use the other side to decorate the back side, just to finish it off. You don't have to do this, but I really liked having the ice cream blob on both sides. The fake popsicle stick is created with that rounded rectangle die that I showed you earlier. And I cut that from some light brown cardstock which really resembles a popsicle stick. And like I said, you could totally use a real popsicle stick if you didn't wanna go through the trouble of making a fake one. For my popsicle stick, I stacked three of these die cuts together and adhered them just with some dot runner. I wouldn't go super thick with this just because you want the matchbox to be able to slip open and close without having anything impact it. But of course, every ice cream cannot go without some sprinkles. So I use some glossy accents to add just a little bit of glue onto the top side of my ice cream box. And then I carefully applied some sprinkles from Pretty Pink Posh's Unicorn Dreams pack. And I'm laying these on top of the adhesive. I'm being a little picky with how they got placed on there. You could be a bit more random and not quite so tedious, but I really love these for sprinkles. So after I glued some of those on, then I filled in any of the leftover spaces with some unicorn confetti glitter from Simon Says Stamp. This helps add a little bit more sparkle and shine to these fun little boxes. Now, of course, you need to fill them with some fun treats. You could fill them with jelly beans, little chocolates, whatever you'd like for your party. And they hold a nice amount and look fantastic, especially when you make them from all sorts of colors. A rainbow of these is just spectacular. So I love how these turned out and these are such fun party favors. No party could ever start without having some invitations. So I'm gonna show you some very simple panel invitations that are easy to mail and also fast to make. I have one of the journaling card sheets that's in the unicorn and rainbows paper pack from DCWV. I showed you that at the beginning when we were creating the cupcake boxes. I'm also gonna be using this Simon Says Stamp Sunday afternoon stamp set, the grad party stamp set, and also some holographic rainbows cardstock. So all of these pieces are gonna help me make these fun little invitations. I started by pre-cutting a bit of the holographic rainbows paper into some smaller sheets so that I could stamp some of these ice creams on top of it. I'm using Simon Says Stamp embossing ink so that way I can sprinkle white embossing powder over top and heat set these to form beautiful crisp white images on top of this stunning holographic rainbows cardstock. You can emboss on top of this holographic rainbows cardstock. Just be sure not to smudge your ink as you apply it. I use the coordinating dies to cut these sundaes out of the cardstock. And now we're ready to go ahead and start assembling these onto our invitations. So I have marked journaling cards here and I'm assembling some of the greetings from the grad party and Sunday afternoons stamp sets onto the journaling cards. This is going to be the back side of our invitation and it's going to have some text that includes the location, the time of the party, what we're celebrating, and then just a fun little sentiment that says birthdays were meant to be celebrated with your favorite treats. I'm gonna stamp that a couple of times after aligning the word stamps onto my Misty. Because I'm making so many of these, I pre-aligned these greetings and words onto my journaling cards, so that way I can stamp these on every single journaling card in the same exact place. Then after I have all my stamping done, I can adhere these journaling cards onto the back side of three and a quarter by four and a quarter inch pieces of paper. These are going to be our invitations. On the reverse side of where the journaling card has been adhered, I'm also adhering some of our little Sundays. These are going to be the front of our little invitations. I also included an embossed party word that's going to get adhered on a slight angle over top of each Sunday. And that's how quick and simple these invitations are. All you need to do now is fill them out with the party, the time, and the place, and mail these out to your fellow partiers. One more final idea to share with you, and that is a banner. I love banners. They're so much fun, they add so much color, and it's a great way to use some of your favorite pattern papers and other specialty papers that you wanna be able to use for your party decor. So I have one of the Honey Bee stamps 
stacked banner dies and I've pre die cut a whole bunch of different types of pattern papers, holographic, glitter, all sorts of different card stocks and pattern papers. Then after I die cut two of every piece, I'm going to adhere them onto some gold thread. This happens to be from Altenew and I lay the thread in between each of the two banners that I'm adhering together. Because I want my banner to be double sided, that's why I die cut every piece twice. So we get this really cool double sided effect. And I'm working right from the spool of thread so that way I can make this as long as I'd like. I'm just using some simple dot runner to adhere this together. You don't need anything too strong because this thread is quite thin and light. Once I've adhered all of my different banners together and made this banner as long as I'd like, I have this really cool and colorful piece that I can also add to the birthday party decor. All of these ideas are so simple and easy to create, but make beautiful additions to your next party. I hope they were inspiring to you and that maybe you'll try one, two, or all of these ideas in your next upcoming party. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for additional inspiration. I'll be back soon with more to share with you, but until next time, I hope you all have a very happy day and one that's very colorful as well. Bye.